I'm Jane Perone, host of On The Ledge podcast. I met somebody yesterday who called me the queen of houseplants. I'd prefer to think of myself as the directly elected representative of houseplants, if you don't mind. Although I do think houseplant head honcho has a certain ring to it. Well, here we are. We've arrived at episode 53. Thank you for sticking with me, or perhaps you're a new listener, in which case, welcome. This is the podcast that keeps your alocasias happy and your double Z plants zipping along. This week, I was at Gardener's World Live on Thursday, yesterday, talking about houseplants, my favourite topic. There were lots of people there who had no idea what a podcast is, but hopefully I've educated a few of them about that. So if you're a new listener and you heard my talk at Gardner's World Live, hello. If you haven't heard me speak live, but you'd like to, I'm going to be at Hampton Court Palace Flower Show. Yes, that literally is the sound of me flicking through my paper diary. Old school. On the afternoon of the 4th of July, I've got two talks, one at 12 and one at 4, and I'd love to see you there. And it's not just me on the agenda. There's loads to do at Hampton Court, from checking out the incredible show gardens to mooching around the floral marquee. So if you can make it, I'd love to see you. But if you live far, far away from London and indeed England and still want to meet up with other houseplant growers then the Facebook group for you is Houseplant Fans of On The Ledge. This is the ever-growing Facebook community for On The Ledge podcast, and it's a great place to share your successes and failures for On The Ledge podcasts so along. It's also a great place to ask for advice, to share news about your plants and your latest purchases, and just generally hang out with other houseplant lovers. We'd love to see you there. Visit my show notes at janeperone.com to find the link or just go into Facebook and search for Houseplant Fans of On The Ledge. Last Friday, I visited the south coast of the UK for a Guardian trip. This was visiting a garden in the exclusive coastal resort of Sandbanks. And while I was down there, I decided that I couldn't miss out on visiting another garden, a much more modest sized plot behind a bungalow near Pool in Dorset that belongs to Mike Clifford. He's at Mike's Rare Plants on Twitter. And in a collection of greenhouses in this small garden, he has an amazing collection of plants that you will absolutely love. Begonias, Nepenthes, Saracenias, Venus flytraps. I got a tour with Mike and was delighted to meet him and see his wonderful collection. In this episode, I'll be bringing you an interview with Mike as we wander around his greenhouses. If you want to hear my interview with him about the plants in the outside part of his garden, many of which are tropical delights that some of you might well be interested in, then you need to be a Patreon subscriber. And I'll explain how to do that at the end of the show. But I'd urge you to check out my show notes at janeperone.com while you're listening to this episode so you can see some of the plants that we're talking about and also get an idea of what Mike's setup is. But now join us as we head into the first greenhouse. Just a few water, uh, just a few watering cans. Oh, I, I should show fetish. this to my husband because actually <laughs> he thinks I've, that my five is too many, and I should oh, show him this the same. This isn't all of them. <laughs> no, exactly. I can't. Can't I, get I enough. Can't have a watering can. You, you can't, can't beat it, can you? No. Uh, you just can't beat it. Oh, so this is a, a little um, delight in an octagonal greenhouse filled with some awesome Saracenias and some also some ferns. Some of these Saracenias are enormous. Yeah, they are massive, aren't they? Big American hybrids. Uh, Brooks hybrids. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, oh, that is gorgeous. That's I love the smell in here. Just, it could just come in here and just, <laughs> just smell. Just enjoy yeah. the smell. And Venus fly traps. When we have our open days, the parents mm. come in, they say, mm. oh, we've had one of those and killed it. Oh, yeah. And most parents do. And the worst thing that the children do when they buy one of these is the first thing is they stick their finger mm-hmm. into the mm-hmm. trap. The hairs... Well, I'll do this one. So the hairs 
once they've been triggered, two triggers the trap dies. So when the kids, when this opens up again, they do it again. The trap dies. Yeah. The plant dies. Um, without any food in it, that will that will hurt the plant. The other thing is, they keep it warm. They keep it in their bedrooms. Mm -hmm. These things need to be kept freezing cold in the winter. So this greenhouse is completely unheated and it freezes. It gets down to minus five in here. And they need that to come back again next year. If they don't get that, they won't come back. Now, this isn't quite your ordinary uh, Venus flytrap. I'm looking at those traps. I'm thinking yeah. that's slightly not the normal no, flytrap. No, Tell me what, what it is, because well, it, it's... It's, it's rather... called... Have you ever seen Jaws? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, it's I called Great White, because yes. the teeth are just shark teeth. Is and it, that's it, really quite tall as well for a Venus flytrap, or is, is it, it just a, that I haven't been growing my Venus flytraps very well? It's a, it's a big old, <laughs> it's a big old trap. It's uh, it, it's it's um, it's one of the nicest ones I've grown. This is a this is a red form. This one's mm. stunning as well. They do flower, and I quite like the flowers. People say pull the flowers off because it, it gives you bigger traps, mm. but uh, I quite like to see the well, flowers. It doesn't seem to be affecting any of your ones no. negatively. And they'll seed. Uh, so yep. you get seed pods. This is last year's seed. Oh wow! So you get teeny traps. Teeny traps with a little fly in there. <laughs> Miniature little <laughs> Already fly. catching things. Well, that's good. And that's I just sowed this year's. So yeah. Always perpetually sowing them mm -hmm. seedlings that are growing from seed. And arisena as well. Another one of my favourites. I've grown quite a few different varieties mm. of arisena. So was this the first greenhouse you no, had in here? Or was no, this no, I actually picked this up on Gumtree for, for, a, for, a, for, a, for no money at all. Well, that's a good deal. It's, uh, yeah, it was uh, advertised, I thought, oh, ideal. I wanted yeah. a little greenhouse with it like that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is incredible. Is that a, which, is that a particular hybrid? It is. I've got to look uh, at this one and make a note of this, because this is... It's Flava Strained, it's called. CV strain. Well, it's it's up to my belly button and above. It's it's hugely tall. I can see that on your NGS open day, that's going to get some attention. Oh, they do. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah that's pretty awesome. So, and so this is the cool greenhouse. This is mm -hmm. the one that's unheated, mm -hmm. and it's it's just hot and humid in here because I water every morning, every night. There's little trays full of water with the Saracena in, so it gets mm. it's, it's nice and humid in here. It's okay for just the, the normal ferns. Then I have my big greenhouse. Well, right, let's let's biggest. check out the big greenhouse. This is the next uh, destination. So, so this is where I keep all my exotics. You will love this. Okay, this is going to be. This is basically me just having a, a baby now because. We're walking into, I've, I've seen pictures of this on Twitter, so I've got an idea, but um, I just don't know where to start in here, Mike. I don't know where to start because there are so many wonderful things. Perhaps we can start with this because I am struggling with this plant, Begonia maculata, like really? nobody's business. Really? And I, I know, everyone's, I've, I've been, why are no, you struggling? Begonia's and I can't fine. figure out why, what I'm doing wrong with it. I really can't, other than maybe it's t in too sunny a spot. Yes. Yeah, it, it, Do this, they like it a lot of shade? This greenhouse has probably got about 60% shading on it. Mm. And um, it seems to work well with the begonias and the ferns mm. and the benthies. Maybe that's what I need to do. Increase shade for that mm. plant. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I struggle with things like this as a house plant, to be honest, but mm. some, of the, some of the things I grow, look at, look at that, the begonia. Oh, that's an amazing begonia. Bipinna tifida. By Bipinna tifida. tifida. That's the one. And you can see that it's, they've got these incredible finely divided red leaves that is gorgeous i've never seen that one before i do love size more is this size moria yeah, size moria i remember seeing that on the dibley stand and just <laughs> thinking right. oh my gosh well, that's that's going from a leaf this one this is a leaf cutter okay so a lot of my begonias people send me mm -hmm. leaves and i just grow the, the maculata was uh, a stem cutting somebody mm -hmm. sent me some don't uh, the the rex type ones with the big leaves easy from leaves the, the uh, cane begonias, you can't do leaf cuttings. Mm -hmm. They'll only grow from uh, stem cuttings. That one there is a baby, 
And Baby, hang on. That's called Fusca. It's wow. probably the biggest leaf begonia in the world. It grows about three foot wide, those leaves. So the minute they're sort of my head sized, I suppose, they're, they're, they're not quite, <laughs> they're full extension. Well, that, that's going to be a, a wonderful thing. Oh, iridescent. Oh, look at that. Got the blue on that. So a lot of these are, are iridescent uh, begonias. And what, I wonder what purpose that serves in nature. I'm I not suppose sure. getting not, more light. Lots of people are, they grow in caves and, and they, they have this beautiful iridescence mm. to them. You get a, you get a, a fantastic, in the evening they come in with the lights on, mm. they, just, they just shine beautifully. And there's, there's all sorts of rarities in there. There's lots of begonias, there's lots of orchids, small uh, miniature orchids over there. Some it is a ones. cornucopia. I say, I, I say this phrase a lot, a cornucopia of delights, but this really is a cornucopia of delights. Tell me about these nepenthes up here, which we're kind so, of standing at yeah. uh, head height. Nepenthes are very lucky. There's, I have two local um, experts that, that grow these and that have collected seeds. And they are absolute just fantastic knowledge, wealth of knowledge on these. So, again, I'm, I'm collecting some of the rarer forms. Um, now this one here called Rob Kyanthi is, look at that. Oh my gosh, that's a, an awesome picture. It's, it's, I, I love them. Um, it kind of looks a bit threatening. It's, 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 well, it's, it's, it's kind them. of saying, so, so, look at me. So when people, people come in and say, well, what do you feed them? I say, well, I actually feed them crickets. Mm -hmm. So I have to go to the pet shop and buy crickets. Mm -hmm. And then... I actually freeze those and then defrost right. them and pop, pop a few crickets in every now and again because they, 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 they do that in the wild. And um, so each one of these pictures will have probably two crickets in. Mm. And even the small ones, if I get a fly indoors, it goes in. Goes in any, there. Any Why insect, waste it? Yeah, wood lice, <laughs> they go in. Anything I find that's been nibbling, yeah. uh, occasionally you'll see a slug coming out and it would just be half digested. The, oh, the really? If you, if you, see, that's one coming out, but it actually has the fluid already in it okay. so before the trap opens yeah uh, they actually have fluid with it you can see it in there yeah that's amazing so that's the plant getting its stomach ready yeah, for yeah absolutely for digesting for the digesting uh, insects wow that's incredible and we must talk about these um what are they are these uh, selenus epiphyllums. E epiphyllums the yeah. flowers are yeah. Ridiculous! They're just ridiculously large and beautiful in red and bright pink. That is a, a thing of a great beauty. Uh, do they last a day? Are they sort of a, that's, a day that's long? About it. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, that's that's the downside of them. Um, for this sort of greenhouse, I might have to rethink where I'm going to put those next year because these the pentas are probably going to take over. Mm. And there's, 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 there's things like this I've got on the seat this year, which uh, you might not have seen one of these before. It's a cross between a, a water banana plant, so it's like a musabastu, but it grows mm. in the water. With the on the top, it has like a uh, alocasia leaf on it. It's just the most amazing plant. I got these seeds uh, from France, and uh, totally tropical. But the leaves will get just like an alocasia macarizia. Wow! And uh, they all sprouted up and they're coming up well. There's all sorts of seedlings growing and. Do you, think, do you think in this internet age it's easier now to get hold of rare things that you're, you're after? Well, I think it's easy to get hold of things. It's still incredibly hard to find out how to grow them. Hmm. Uh, there's some of the stuff that I grow, there is virtually no information on the hmm. internet on how to grow them. Hmm. You rely upon friends around the world that, that sort of uh, give you advice on hmm. how, to, how to grow patients. This is... This is probably the most stunning in the same as not in flower, called Parishii. And it has almost like all the little flowers on mm. it. It's almost blue. Look at this. Elephoglossum trinatum. That's, that's a, the widest fern leaf I've ever seen. Yeah. With these incredible, the young leaves are just amazingly he, dark, covered in dark hairs. Sort of like a baby gorilla or something. Yeah, a <laughs> yeah or a little caterpillar. That's yeah. that's amazing. We've got that, and then you've got the grub fern <laughs> to go with it. Oh yes, with the stem. Yeah. With the is, are they what are they classed as rhizomes, rhizomes or rhizomes yeah. that look like yeah. grubs? Yeah, grubs. 
well, I could just be in here all day, quite frankly. You might, I'm, I would just be unable to. Do you find it hard to go to bed at night? I'd just be in here pottering. And you might see pictures at night, but I come up, I just come and stand here at night. Yeah. Oh my God, I throw some lights up there. Yeah. It's, it, it takes on a whole new. It's, it's a bit spooky, but it smells really. Mm. I water everything down, and I love it. You know, things like this, this, this leaf. These are two new leaves this week. Uh, Burkelia ferox, another rarity that I grow. It's like, like the punk, punk of the uh, plant world yeah, with these uh, spikes. It, it grows absolutely beautiful. That's just an awesome to overwinter leaf. them, but you can grow them from seed each year mm. and get a decent sized plant each, each And what year. do you do with this green? Is this, is this, heat, this is presumably heated in winter? Heated to 14 degrees. Mm-hmm. That's set on all the time, even for cold summer nights it'll come mm. on. So, so it's 14 degrees and then I'll have the uh, mister going as well. Mm. And then I'll have my propagation roof. As if that wasn't enough. Okay, this is uh, this is another. Uh... Okay, so this is this is where this is the engine house here. We're coming into where all the hard work goes on. Yeah. So there are a few of my tie giants that I've been this year. This is quite a this is quite a selection of plants. I'm sort of slightly speechless here. And there's uh, begonias from leaf cuttings. Mm. And I just started. This is my first attempt ever. And I've been shown how to do it of growing nepenthes from seed. Okay. Wow. And there's everything gets going in here to start with. Mm. Uh, whether it be in one of the smaller propagators. I can feel the warmth coming off those. To, off those, mm. yeah. So you've got um, plenty of. There's all sorts of. There's all sorts of things growing in here. Solana, Petitium, the tree tomatoes. What's your electricity bill like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the wife pays that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, there's a few. Brussels sprouts? That's, that's well, very, I've just got it's a, fine. As if no this no wasn't judgment enough, here. As if this wasn't enough, I took on an allotment this year as well. Oh my gosh, wow. So, so, uh, so you've got your hands full. <laughs> you really have. These these are these are being grown for a, by a friend who's doing a, a series on, on uh, unusual plants. So they're not your normal Brussels sprouts. No. They're, they're, they're black Brussels sprouts. Of basically. course, of course. So there's nothing nothing usual in here. Mm, no. Like the tomatoes, they're, they're black, toma- black cherry tomatoes. Oh, yeah. They're not... Uh, yep. Everything's, everything's uh, unusual. Yeah. This is uh, a success story that I grew from see. This is uh, Escalante manihot. Oh, yes. Great grahami. Yeah. The manihot grahami. Um, it's the hardy one. Mm. Uh, it's almost like the snowflake palm again. Yes, it's a similar dissected. shape of leaf, isn't it? Totally hardy, though. It, it will die if I leave it in here. That will have to be planted out okay. in the garden and get going. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's... Uh, and that's about it, really. Oh well, you know, I mean, not much to worry about there. It's uh, it's an incredible collection, and and I think the thing that's really nice is, as you say, is sharing the knowledge with other people, oh, and, and and learning, yeah. and learning from others because, you know, there's always trial and error. You feel like you've 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 done a lot of trial and error, but actually, if you can pass that on and save somebody else the trial and error, Absolutely. and make it easier for them, then that's Absolutely. a good feeling, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's and if people if people fail and it's I mean, some of these plants be quite expensive mm. if they fail they're not going to grow it again if mm. it's a success they'll they'll carry on growing and uh, and having a garden like, like, like mine this is this is what I like I've yeah. several of my friends in ah you're spreading the gospel. Thanks to Mike Clifford for showing me round his greenhouses. If you want to listen to the rest of that interview looking at his outdoor part of his garden, then you need to join Patreon, become a subscriber to On The Ledge. You can do this by visiting patreon.com forward slash on the ledge and it will cost you a princely $5 a month. For this, you'll get extra goodies in the form of On The Ledge, an extra leaf which comes out rather irregularly it has to be said but at least twice a month plus extra goodies and the knowledge that you're supporting the show if you don't know much about patreon and you want to find out more then visit my show notes at janeperone.com where you'll find a link to an faq which explains it all if you want to give a one-off donation to the show you can visit co-fi.com but unfortunately that won't get you onto the extra content from on the ledge an extra leaf 
If that interview has got you wondering about propagating begonias, it's a bit of a complicated business because begonias come in all different types. Ones that you take leaf cuttings from, ones that need stem cuttings, ones that can be divided. There is a whole world of begonias out there. In my show notes, I'm going to include some links, a couple of links, one showing leaf cuttings of begonias and the other showing stem cuttings plus other advice on leaf cuttings too. So do look at my show notes if you want to find out more about propagating begonias. It's tremendous fun and it's a really easy way to make more plants to give away to your friends or just make a jungle in your front room. And just one snippet from the American Begonia Society link that I include in the show notes, which is this, and it's something I've never thought about before, but this guide suggests rooting cuttings in little baby food jars because they're small. I personally use shot glasses from Ikea, which you might have seen on my Instagram feed in the past. It turns out this is actually quite a good idea to use a small glass container. The reason being, according to the American Begonia Society, that begonias release rooting hormones as they start to root and that means if you use a really large container that rooting hormone is diluted a great deal in a smaller container with less water there's less dilution therefore you're better off with less water around your roots I don't know if that's true it sounds it sounds totally plausible but it's certainly worth a thought when you're rooting cuttings And if you missed any of the names of the plants we mentioned in that interview, do check out the show notes where they'll be named with links to useful pages about those plants too. And as always, I'd recommend Dibley's as a great place to buy foliage begonias if you happen to be in the UK. Question of the week comes from the gardening engineer on Instagram and she wanted to know if I could suggest a precautionary treatment for pests on a new houseplant, in this case a triostar stromanth. Well this is a great question because it is very very advisable to be nervous about bringing new plants into your collection because they could be harboring any number of different pests along the way from anything from mealybugs to fungus gnat larvae and even if you've just treated your plants with nematodes or fungus gnats if you bring in a new plant you could very quickly increase your population once again so precautionary treatments it's a really good idea but But the best precautionary treatment to prevent pests is really to make sure that your houseplant is as healthy as possible because pests tend to be very clever. They tend to spot plants with a weak spot and then get in there and capitalise on it. So if you can keep your plant healthy and happy as possible, you'll find that it's a lot less likely to suffer from a pest attack. And if it does suffer from a pest attack, it's more able to shrug it off and recover quite quickly. So when you've got a new plant coming into the house, I would always advise quarantining it in a separate spot from the rest of your plants, ideally a different room. Remember, this plant is in a honeymoon period, so it may look rubbish for a while if it's been, particularly if it's been posted to you, or it may look amazing for a while and then start to go downhill. But don't take that initial period of ownership as an indication of how your plant's going to fare long term. But the best precautionary treatment for pests is, as I say, keeping your plant super healthy. That way, if pests do strike, it will be able to fight back. Theoretically, I guess you could be dousing all your plants in insecticides or soaps before they've even shown any signs of infestation but quite frankly that's a bit of a waste of money and also it's not really ideal for the plant which doesn't really want to have stuff sprayed on it unless it's absolutely necessary. got a question for me just find me off an email to on the edge podcast at gmail.com or get in touch on instagram facebook or twitter you can find all of those links in my show notes on my website janecarone.com that's p-e-r-r-o-n-e that's all for this week i'll be back next week with a gesneriad special yes it's what i've been waiting for for some time an episode where we chat about everything from streptocarpus to syningia 
I'll have an expert from the Gesneriad Society with me to help me offer you some top tips for looking after these incredible plants. Look forward to joining you then. Until then, stay leafy, folks. Bye. you heard in this week's episode was Roll Jordan Roll by the Joy Drops, an instrument the boy called Happy Day Gakana by Samuel Corwin, and O oh Mallory by Josh Woodward, all licensed under Creative Commons. See my website for details.